We're going to start off with uh, going back to proving there are no satellites, the the GPS and all that's just a just a joke. I haven't had a lot of luck with playing these clips, the audio. Sometimes it sounds tinny, but until I can come up with or think of a better idea, this will be worth it. It's it's uh, barely 30 seconds. This is what Army surveyors are doing now. Because artillery operations are sensitive, you must qualify for a secret clearance in this MOS. Then the Army will train you in skills such as map reading and principles of surveying. You'll train to use optical instruments such as the T-16 theodolite and electronic devices such as the improved position azimuth determining system. Or that's why I wanted you to hear the improved positioning azimuth direction sender. What, what did he say? Now, let's listen to that, that again. Train to use optical instruments such as the T-16 theodolite and electronic devices such as the improved position azimuth determining system or I position azimuth determining system. Okay. And it's the improved parallel asthma determining system. We used to call it, uh, these guys now are 13 T's or 13 M's. We were just 82 Charlie's. Uh, and there were some other surveyors that did something else. And we called it when I was on a platoon, just me and like four other guys and two sergeants, you know, two Jeeps. And uh, they had the, the pads in the back. We called it the parallel azimuth direction system or sender. That's what we called it. And what I called it was like, we didn't have to work. My last eight or nine months, I was a surveyor in, uh, at Fort Bragg. And uh, the system they used took up the whole back of a Jeep. So when I said two Jeeps, I mean, they had two Jeeps for separate pads. And then uh, we had two other Jeeps for us. So that's your, your pads. This was your uh, 82 Charlie. What, you know, what we did. Uh Cord field data, schematic sketches, survey stations, platforms, astronomic observations. I never, never had an opportunity to where I could have seen where that would have been possibly. They needed me to do that. But measuring azimuth angles, you know, basically you had to go from one known position to another known position and make sure that every position in between was a known position and... There you go, it was your pads operator. So this was even after, uh, this must have been when they were phasing it out. And uh, so it was, uh, the 82 Charlie is, is gone bye-bye as of uh, 2011. But I wanted to look up, so I just was Googling parallel azimuth direction sender sensor system i wasn't getting anything i ended up uh finding a couple of different things uh that i had found like six months ago looked for here and there but just so much stuff to learn right everybody so i looked up a couple of them that were connected to you know azimuth and senders and i looked at them magnetic azimuth detector okay and this was for a uh industrial sewing machine yeah and so uh you know i read a little bit about it and pretty complicated man when you get those bobbins down there bobbin but i just you know took a couple of chances here i just clicked one you know 
And uh, sure enough, it was about a uh, compass system. And, you know, I've got to say, you know, I, I was on here, you know, you know, now that I think about it, it was around Christmas time. And uh, so it was nine months ago. And I remember that it was here and I found it like on the boom first try. So I'm pretty happy about that. And what it does is it takes your, uh, it gets converted using proportional DC currents because you don't have the uh, harmonic vibrations and pitch, I guess. And it cancels out all the sound to where they're going to be using the term to a near null. You know, your guess is as good as mine. I, I'm thinking that it is the silencing of the vibrations in the factor so that it can uh, settle down the, the compass. If you've ever, you know, used a compass, I mean, if you, you, you know, you move it, you're going to wait, you know, a couple of seconds for that maybe to get back pulled north. And so it's a, you know, we're on it, man. It, it was a automatic field cancellation. And uh, you can look that up. It, you know, I, I guess this is the patent number. Uh, I think I'm in German or something. French? No, that must be German. And uh, so some of the translations are, are goofy, but it's just the way I'd rather do it. So it just goes breaking down all of their, uh, you know, reasons why it's different. And when they get down to the, uh, probably the, their, uh, their we, we claim. It's a magnetic compass system for a navigable craft. The combination comprising detector means, including a plurality of pickup windings responsible to the direction of the Earth's magnetic field relative thereto for providing a first polarity of alternating signals representing a respective vector component thereof. Getting your triangulation and everything and you're, you're picking up a beacon and it's able to get a clear clean there's the beep right there you know i'm going right to that beep and uh so they're happy with it uh, of course in their claim you know uh it's good and so i think i popped on uh i looked for a couple of more over here that had you know, to do with uh, compasses. And I looked at these and sure enough, these are just improvements on the, uh, on the other ones, you know. Hey, look at that figure too. You see, this thing brings it down to null. This is the opposite of the flux capacitor. See, the flux capacitor needed a gigawatt to kick it up. This flux, anti-flux capacitor, bring it down. I just thought it looked like a flux capacitor. And there's so many good videos about the uh, symbolism of 9-11 and everything else in that movie. It's just crazy. I remember with my ex-wife, uh, we were dating. We, we saw that one when we were dating, you know, and it was like, that was a big deal. It was a very popular movie. And we was like, well, they got our money and they were good they, for brainwashing. You know, what do we know? So here, you know, what else do you need? The, uh, the, the problem was, uh, let me, uh, and see if this is the one I only want to show this. We're only going to go a few more minutes. Uh, you know, I could read the digital flange, blah, blah, blah. A lot of uh, magnetic stuff here. Let's just see if this last one is the strap down induction compass transmitter with compensation for heading error due to the vertical component 
of the Earth's magnetic field and due to two cycle error during turns and during climbing and diving maneuvers. Okay, so the problem is the compass is supposed to be flat, let that needle float, but what they're doing is turning, diving, and climbing your yaws and your yin yangs are all in there your pitches and that stuff and so uh it's pretty easy to see that the reason that they're dealing with these is that they just are getting you know closer and closer to getting one that really works and they're just improving on what the pads system was it if if they have the same system and all it is is an improved pads and whether they are calling it a parallel azimuth direction sender or system or a parallel azimuth detection system It's a direction, detection, sensor system. Get the direction, who's getting detected. It's just, they're just changing the words to use the same thing. And iPad, the iPad system. You know, I got my iPads. No, oh, I'm going to look up that for iPads and see if this guy is telling the truth. What do you think is going to come up? Like 48 pages of get your fake iPad charger genius I don't know if that I don't know if they can think that far ahead but if they can no wonder we got this far behind the ball right and so it's mostly when it's turning the the angle dip and so if those if everything they're telling us because uh and I know that you know you can take my word for it. You can go through this. I'm not the kind of guy that's going to want to be, uh, you know, called out on this. In one of these articles, it's telling you that, you know, the problem with those uh, gimbals and the, the, the uh, what they're doing now with their gyroscopes is they're lagging on their turns and stuff. Yeah, they're still, you know, maybe we can't see it with our eye, but it's, it's still lagging. It's a mechanical device. So, you know, it's just getting, you know, errors induced by the Earth's vertical field during these maneuvers without sensing the vertical field directly. And they're used to cancel the effect of the Earth's vertical field. The compensating signals are derived from the Earth's magnetic field, a known quantity. The magnetic dip angle, D, a known quantity for any given latitude and longitude, and the tilt angle of the plane. Of the plane. That's the only tilt angle you're figuring in on that. Yeah. Which is since quantity is obtainable from the aircraft's vertical gyroscope. Turn compensating. They wouldn't be looking to, you know, when was this? They're just really. getting into some, you know, let's just say they're pretty close right now on their, everything they're doing now is just trying to get, you know, closer to perfect. Good luck with that. Hey, thanks for staying with me on this one. I, I mean, I could throw in a bunch of flat earth maps and stuff like that, but this is 
I mean, uh, this is the same thing. This is the same thing they were using in the 70s, uh, 79, 80. Uh, it was field tested by late 82 and I was there. I was helping. So signing off here, Flat Earth Nation. Don't let them tell you anything else.